I don't see anything, but, but you know, I'll trust you are there and looking at me. <laughs> we are, we all are, and we're, we're super excited to have you here today. <laughs> so with this, it is actually my pleasure to welcome back uh, Yagis Mungan to Purdue University. Uh, Yagis graduated from our Studio Arts graduate program with a focus on electronic and time-based art in 2013, so a few years back. Uh, before that, he received a Master's of Science degree at the Chalmers Technical University in Gothenburg in Sweden, and also a Bachelor's degree from Sabanchi University in Istanbul, Turkey. Since graduating from Purdue, Yagis has worked in a variety of creative technology companies in the San Francisco Bay Area, including Float, Hybrid Entertainment, AKQA, and most recently, Facebook's AR VR division. In addition to his daytime jobs, Yagis has kept an active exhibition record, creating unique interactive experiences and interfaces using emerging technologies. These have been featured around the world, for instance, at the Prague Quadrennial in the Czech Republic, the Balance Unbalance Festival in the UK, and the Soundwave Biennial in San Francisco. He has also created interactive experiences for the Nike stores in New York, Paris, and Beijing and IBM Watson. Today, Yagis will talk about the combination of art and technology in both his independent artistic works and his corporate creative explorations. And again, I'm, I'm super excited to welcome you back here, albeit it's just virtual today, but uh, it, it's a great uh, pleasure to have you here, Yagis. And with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Fabian, for having me here. It's like a pleasure to you know, be back and like, you know, try to like, uh like give something back to the like you know the uh etv community and like thanks for the introduction like you know also like you kind of covered up something that i'm going to talk about already but as fabian said my name is yagis it's written in turkish as like you know yos and let me actually do this so it's, it's like the weird alphabet so like you know and i'm from turkey hence my name and uh, today we are going to talk about kind of like who am i am i here what i'm going to talk about I've done, and then we'll go through like some of my personal works in detail, like you know, and then and then some of my like more like uh, day job works with agencies like Float Hybrid or like AKQA, and then some of my work with Oculus. And then finally, we'll have uh, like some time for Q and A. Uh, and but at any time, if you have questions, like you know, please feel free to like you know interrupt me and I'm scared with the video call and everything and I'm not seeing anybody's faces if you're reading has I won't see it but like don't hesitate. So um that being said, okay let's start. So um first of all I have this nice picture and uh it's a uh, I, I just might as well saw that like you know I have these kind of like pictures that I will talk about very little about the project and I'll like, dive detail in like some projects. So this is like one of the like you know, very short kind of like uh, excerpts. So what you are seeing is a ketraman and it's a kind of like a virtual musical instrument. So in VR you get under this dome and like you know like, you attach those kind of like uh, hexagons to play music. And it was uh, created for 3D web based and like you know performed live and it was all done with web technologies back in 2017, which means it probably isn't working anymore. I need to kind of like make sure it's kept up to date and I haven't done that to be honest. But it's kind of like one of the projects that I kind of like you know, work on to kind of like give people uh, like the ability to kind of like create and experimenting with the like you know, creation process. So. Going between my, as Fabian said, I'm from Turkey. I did undergrad in Istanbul. Like I'm studying both art and technology. Like my uh, like major is on like electronics, but I did took art classes and I never knew how to combine them. Like by the time I figured out that I was already kind of like a senior student and like you know, and when I figured I could actually combine them, like you know, I wanted to do something with that. So like I did a master's in Sweden, like you know, focusing on like you know. Uh, generating music and visuals with code. And like, you know, at the end of my uh, master's in Sweden, like I created this uh, system, which you know, you would hit a button and it would give you like a uh, algorithm to generate that music like, based on like, you know, some uh, like, you know, uh, user tests and like, you know, some uh, like music rules. And what I realized after this was like, you know, okay, this is interesting, this is exciting, but it also did not have any human like you know uh, 
presence, like, you know, you just push a button, whatever, and the system, the technology, the software was creating, like, the, the thing, so that felt, uh, like, you know, like, not that satisfying, so I wanted to, like, you know, involve the people into the world, into the, like, you know, the things that I created, so, like, you know, I want to focus on interactivity, and looking around, like, you know, um, I learned about ETB, I sent an email to Fabian, that was, like, 2010 spring or something like that, or like fall, winter, not 2010 winter, like, you know, and then we you know, exchanged a couple of emails and I applied to UTB and joined in like, you know, fall 2010. And I spent like a great three years over in like, you know, Lafayette, West Lafayette. Uh, like learned a lot of like, you know, how to um, not just create cool, interesting things, but also kind of like, uh, like how to have an idea, how to create, an, how to convert an idea into an experience that like, talks about a message, that talks about something you actually want to express. And like, you know, expressing that with the interaction makes it more meaningful, you know. Um, after my graduation from ETB, um, I looked around for a job and I was looking at academia because like, I spent my last, like, you know, nine years in academia, not, not nine, yeah, nine years in academia. But uh, in the end, I actually joined, uh, like, you know, industry in the area. And, like, you know, I worked in agencies that are focusing on interactive experiences, like, you know, uh, emerging technologies and kind of, like, combining, not necessarily the art, but, uh, like, the kind of like same kind of um, skills to create uh, unique experiences, storytelling things, or just marketing. On, on the other side, like, I'm also still like you know, doing my personal art uh, experiences. Like, you know, I was showing things in the exhibitions and like on Bay Area, San Francisco at that point was actually a great place. Like there were lots of interest. There was a sort of like, you know, uh, people who had similar skill sets, like they were artists with technological skill sets they wanted to create, they wanted to show. So that was a nice group, that was a nice audience and that was a pretty good time. And for the last year and a half, I've been working at Facebook in their like, you know, um, now I've named Facebook Creator Labs media uh, section. So we are looking at like, you know, what's the future of media in uh, VR. So, um, so the picture in the background is actually one of those like site specific store act activations that Fabian mentioned that I did for Nike. This is the, uh, this is the Soho store in the, uh, and like, you know, what we did was basically we used like, you know, Kinect sensors and like a kind of large video wall to create a, you know, gamified uh, basketball experience. So you would grab your new shoe, you could try it and like you know, play some games and like get some feedback with coaches and from the system. Like it's uh, it's basically for selling more shoes, but you still like, you know, think about like lots of kind of things like, you know, like uh, you have to kind of add emotions, if not ideas and like, or also ideas like, you know, how to like, uh, like enhance and like, you know, uh, upsell the, the, the shoes. I mean, in the end it was for setting, so that was always kind of one of my personal uh, problems. Like I worked in the like, advertising industry for like five, six years. And uh, like the end goal never really talked to me, but getting there was always interesting, the craft, the skills, like, you know, the problems that we were solving. So going next, I'll talk about a couple of my personal verbs in detail. So um, to me, uh, like there are a couple of categories I'm thinking about like what to work on, like you know, or uh, like one of the main things is like you know I like telling stories, saying a message through like you know interaction, digital environments, and sound. And like you know, other parties, I'm interested in like you know enabling others to create. So, and uh, on top of that, like when I create works, like I like I don't want to create passive things. I like to create like you know interactive systems where like the both the person as well as like the software computer is also like active agents in the experience so it creates like some like you know like give and take or like you know color response between the two of them and um that's like one of some of my kind of main topics on another level like you know uh, if i look at my work and categorize them like you know there are two main categories one is like you know more kind of craft oriented so like you know i don't have like a say, message to say but i'm interested in a certain user interaction, certain like, you know, type of visuals or aesthetics or certain technologies. So I kind of create this kind of like shorter exploratory experiences, like, you know, toys that I kind of like uh, still like show around, but they don't necessarily have like, you know, a strong concept with them. They are more about like, you know, having fun expressing yourselves. And on the other side, I have like, you know, uh, 
draft style value more actually at this for my side, but that kind of more concept focus. So like I want I'm like uh, disturbed by something and I want to talk about it like what was the best way to talk about it through like an installation trade, like you know, interior experience. So that always like you know takes more time from like you know getting from that concept to the uh, what's that called to the like you know an interactive uh, piece. But that's always like you know uh, to me more fulfilling, but uh, also kind of like takes more time, requires more energy. So I'll talk about two works that are of the concept based, and um, let's start with the first one. So Urban Intermezzo is a uh, interactive audio installation. It was created for the Sound Wave uh, by you know, Sound Festival in 2016. It was shown in a couple of places, but initially for California Academy of Science, which is kind of like a uh, like a um, a popular science museum that's created for like you know all ages, like from young to adults, and it's kind of part of the like, uh, like the art complex inside Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. And um, this was shown like within like you know like one of the like night events, uh, like which is kind of more aimed for adults. The concept of urban intermezzo was uh, like you know about like highlighting the change of the landscape of San Francisco. And like I came to San Francisco around the end of 2013, and like you know, even that time, like you know, the tech industry was already established and was growing, and you could see kind of like older, smaller buildings going down and like coming back with kind of like uh, as like large scale skyscrapers or like office buildings. There was like lots of change happening in the city, and this was kind of like um, not necessarily good or bad. There was different changes that were good. There was different changes that were bad. But it was a change that was happening, and like you know, like uh, some people were kind of like wasn't was uh, not immune, but was ignoring that. So I want to kind of highlight that a little bit. And on the sound side, like you know, I was looking at cities. The city as a whole is a musical instrument, like you know, because uh, like when you let's say change the buildings, when you like you know create new buildings, it creates like you know uh, like the wind flow, it creates, uh, it changes how the winds flow through the city, creating like new soundscapes. It also changes like, you know, like where humans gather, where the traffic gather. So like, and this all kind of was changing the city's soundscape, like, you know, like replacing a kind of like a, a neighborhood where people hang out in the streets with a kind of like more working, like, you know, uh, like neighborhood was instantly shaping that locations, like, you know, uh, soundscape and how the social like interactions were going on. So, to highlight that, I created this experience where, like, you know, uh, the city becomes an orchestra and each kind of like uh, landmarks are individual, um, like, um, instruments. And you, as the kind of audience, approach the, you know, uh, orchestrator's kind of like desk and, like, use your hand gestures to kind of like basically trigger that change and destroy San Francisco's landmarks in a kind of extreme way but also create like, you know, this beautiful soundscape along the way. So as I said, it was kind of like more about like, getting attention to the change that was happening. So let me show, show some pictures. So this was the, uh, what's it called? The uh, orchestrator's kind of like uh, a stage, basically. You had a music, I had a music stand with some instructions and like a uh, leap motion controller to like, you know, uh, catch the hand movements. And then the visuals were kind of like projected onto a screen in the space. And um, I'm sure Fabian tells you this, like, you know, documentation is a huge part of the work. And I uh, I just had to uh, ignore that part because of like the limited resources that I have, which was only me. So I don't have any good kind of like uh, documentation. And it's like, you know, think about it's like the dark, uh, kind of like, uh, like dim light environment uh, with like, you know, people chattering and like, you know, it's kind of like a hard place to uh, document. So I was kind of like just ignoring that. And so I don't have a great documentation, but I have like, a video that kind of hopefully will play good and that kind of showcases like what it sounded like and what the experience kind of looked like. Basically you had your hands like that were kind of like reflected in, uh, in the virtual environment and then you kind of like use the simple UI to kind of like uh, look around and then you could kind of focus on a, a landscape and kind of like not landscape, okay, uh, focus on a uh, landmark and then do the gestures to kind of like create a distraction but also the soundscape. So let me play the video super quick.
So, um, any questions so far? I think we're doing okay, I guess. Okay. okay. Right. And uh, so, like as I said, uh, like you know, the, right now we were seeing a kind of screen capture, but in in the in the installation, basically, like the uh, it was a video projection, and kind of like more like you know, actual human size, kind of with hands, and like you know, with a large uh, space. So. Okay, how did it work? So, you know, obviously one part of uh, the kitchen always the technology and the tools to kind of get there. So um, I used Unity to kind of create the experiences core, like, you know, the interaction, the visuals, and then like, you know, I used as like, a magic leap sensor to kind of like uh, capture the hand gestures. And like, I wanted to create like, you know, uh, like reactive sounds that are kind of like looking at like, you know, how fast you move and like, you know, kind of that can trigger sounds in relation to each other. So I used, I hooked up Unity with Max MSP and like, you know, used Max MSP to kind of host like virtual instruments so they can kind of like be triggered live. And like I used kind of like virtual instruments and, and employed synthesizers and adjusted them to kind of like create uh, like a soundscape that's kind of related to a little bit uh, like each landmark, for example, like the market uh, the ferry building, which is kind of like by the sea and like has seagulls, had like, you know, it's kind of like a uh, synthesized seagull sounds in the end. So the visuals were projectors and like, you know, I did stereo speakers, so it wasn't the most kind of complicated audio setup. But like one, for example, random challenge was like, you know, um, like due to this uh, place's popularity, like the whole exhibition, like, you know, had like an hour to set up, like, you know, like they would close for the day. And then before they were opening up for the night, you would have like an hour to kind of like get in, do the installation and like, you know, it, it had to be pretty fast and lean basically. And then I was also like a single person. So I need to be very kind of like conscious about what am I prioritizing. And um, it was a nice experience. Like, you know, I showed it in a couple other places too. And um, it, it's, I still enjoy it. There's like so many things I want to make it better or change, but it's about kind of like, like, it was still helpful for like you know, creating that storytelling experience. So for the next uh, work I'm going to talk about, it's called Ely, and it is a similar kind of uh, structure in the sense that this is also another thing, another work that focuses on a kind of like a certain concept and built upon that. This was uh, created for 3D web Fest back in 2016, and I initially shot this at like Fort Mason Center for Arts and Culture. It was kind of like about uh, personal assistance and AI and kind of like it was a hot topic here. And like, you know, I showed it in multiple places after that. And um, I created different versions, like, you know, from like big giant video versions to like, you know, VR versions to like a web version actually. And uh, let's get into the details. So what it was, it was a semi-intelligent AI that doesn't understand language, but tries to understand sounds. So what it means that like, you know, when you say something, it won't understand it at all. And like, you know, so it was a kind of like a anti-thesis for the voice assistants. Like, you know, at that point, like, you know, people were starting to have Alexas in their houses, like, you know, using that to, like, I personally, like, you know, using that to kind of like, you know, control my home. And one thing I realized was like, you know, like I was getting dependent on them, but I was also getting super frustrated at them because of my Turkish accent. Like, you know, I would tell it to, do something and do something totally different. So like, you know, that kind of being frustrated at the kind of like a small plastic box was like worried me. So like I was putting so much expectations on that. So I talked about, talked about this a little bit and Ili was kind of the result of that. And the idea is that like Ili doesn't, it's, it's a kind of floating like virtual AI, but it, and it kind of talks to you, but it doesn't understand language, but tries to understand sounds, which means like it looks at your pitch, like the loudness of your volume, like the roughness, and like, you know, and changes its colors and like you know, shape based on that. And as responses, it wasn't actually like doing anything super complicated, but basically kind of like trying to uh, mimic you. And the, the uh, my reference was kind of like talking with pets or babies, or even like, you know, like, teddy bears, like, you know, like when you can come have a, like, conversation with your cat, even though knowing that, like, when they meow back, they don't mean much, you can put the meaning over there. So, like, you know, it's like, you can 
I can have like you know, these conversations with these uh, like not English speaking entities and I can enjoy them and like you know I can like have meaningful like thoughts with that but like with this kind of super complex assistance like I was saying something very simple and was getting frustrated over it so um, basically it was this kind of like uh, this sphere with kind of like a core as a representation and like you know, based on like you know what uh, you said or like your voice as I said it would kind of like get more kind of conform or like you know kind of get more spiky based on your kind of like uh, voice characteristics. So I think I have a video of that. Hopefully this will play. So this is the performance from 2016. It should be around like, you know, a couple minutes. And uh, I don't like the first part of the sound design I did, but bear with me, I also hate it. How are you today? How is the show? Are you enjoying it? Okay. So, did you find any new friends? Yeah, Kevin Yun was fine. Yep. You can learn some new tricks from her, like about maybe scales. Okay. So, what is the latest news? And? Sure, um, let's do something else, like, you know, raise the roof. Do you have any songs? That's not a song. Okay, let's try to, you know, connect the cloud, grab some music. Can you do that? You don't need any of those? Okay. How about I play something, you know, like more musical? I don't buy that. Okay, let's try something together. How about like, like do you know the Ninth Symphony? Okay, we'll do this together. I will try to whistle it and you'll try to repeat after me. Does that make sense? Okay. That sounded okay, let's try again. Okay. Really? Is that it? Okay, how about we do this, you know, like we take it slow. Okay, okay, calm down. I understand, there's lots of pressure here, but how about this? We go offline and work on this together. Is that okay? Okay. So that was the uh, performance of Ili from like 2016 and like, you know, and as I said, like it's this, this thing like where you kind of like basically create a conversation with you like, you know, and it's actually very self-reflecting and it was like fun, like, you know, as I said, I did a couple of versions of that that also looks at like, you know, like your emotions and like, you know, showed it in a couple of smaller parts and for technologies, like, you know, I use WebGL, 3GS, 4D visuals, like every, every like sound manipulation creation was done with WebRT API and obviously it needs a microphone. So it's actually like, you know, a very small footprint, like you just send a link and it works, like, you know, and I think it still works, but not the web VR version because, like as I said, the web VR has been evolving, and like, I don't really kind of like, uh, support that since then. 
So going forward, um, I'll talk about some of my like you know agency work, and these are kind of that I did with um, AKQA and like you know uh, and the float. And like you know the core idea of agency work is like similar craft, like you know similar uh, issues, but like you know, it needs to be very polished. And like you know, the idea is getting the word out, like you know the message is kind of like um, like much more literal, and like you have to like make sure like you know is there and people get it. And obviously like there's larger teams, there's larger budgets, like you know, and it's not just one person or like friends like running around. And um, it is pros and cons definitely. So um, what you are seeing is actually like a, a like larger than human size, like you know, kiosk that talks about like, you know, IBM and we kind of did a bunch of these that traveled the world, like, you know, and uh, they were just kind of like big robots, like, uh, structures and they were kind of very pleasing visually and like you know but in in score they were just like you know uh, interactive like brochures like talking about uh, things so uh, the one that I'm going to go in detail is actually this one uh, it's again for IBM and it was uh, created for IBM thing it was kind of like a uh, like a actually room size, like you know, like the, that those people that you see there are actually like you know, like a little larger than human size, and like we had, uh, um, uh, let's see, it's kind of like four meter by twelve meters long space, not involving the like you know the ramp and everything. So uh, the Watson primer was like you know the main idea was like how does Watson work? Like you know who is IBM Watson? Like you know. And like, does it actually work? And how can I learn more? So like, you know, it's, it's like lots of interactive touch points, like you know, and uh, like experiences that were very well crafted. But like the whole, whole idea is like, you know, kind of like how do you inform the user? And on the secondary idea side, like you know, we need to show like how cool IBM Watson is and how fun IBM Watson is. So um, going back to the image, like what we had was uh, if you can see my pointer like this thing was basically on the ground uh, like a, uh, it's basically a uh, interactive touch screen for stepping on so like you know those we had like a point cloud like you know moving there and you could kind of like play with those as you walk around like you know so people would kind of change where they were walking just to cross through that and like play with that we had these interactive walls here kind of telling stories kind of like a uh, more uh, voice based experience on the back and like some more just over there and this thing was like you know something pretty huge and like you know began like um, couldn't travel that much but it was also uh, super fun when you see it like working it's just like you know like really it's just kind of like a spectacle it's very well made and it's all for marketing also so the technologies that we used for that was we had Unity like running some of the like more 3D stuff and like the kind of like the interactive dots. We had web technologies for creating the video wall and like the other kiosks and we had projectors, we had like you know, interactive floor screens and we also actually had IBM Watson powering some of the experiences. So you kind of like the seeing is believing as you were interacting with that you would like you know, see that it was working. So um, going on next, I'll talk a little bit about my Oculus work, like, you know, and my current team is about exploring the future of interactive media. It's like not necessarily games, but it's more about storytelling and interaction, like uh, using six dimensions of freedom and like, you know, figuring out what's uh, media, what can media be in VR, you know, like pictures or videos. But um, the work that I can talk about a little bit in detail is actually Venues. Venues is uh, like Oculus is kind of like uh, what's it called? Offering for uh, like enjoying traditional media in a uh, in a social context. So um, so like you know, as, as this is from the marketing field energy of attending live events from the best seat in the house. So basically, you know, you can attend a virtual event and like you know, enjoy with friends and enjoy with some interaction. So I have a quick video of this too. And this is all from like the Oculus uh, store page, so like nothing uh, secret or anything. So let's see if this pump plays.
So yeah, this was kind of a marketing video for uh, venues. It's a it's a better product that's kind of uh, free for anybody who has a headset, who has a Quest headset. It's a kind of social place. It says like you know media. So it's actually I actually like using it in France. Like it's a fun place. So as for my final remarks, because I want still want to give like you know time for Kenny, I already like ran more than I should. Like I always kind of follow up what's interesting for me, like both kind of like a uh, personal, both work-wise, and like always like learning as much as possible. But uh, to be honest, like you know, as I was saying, like you know, like I had like a, you know at some point a nine to five work, and then after that, and again, like, kind of like artist, uh, like you know, uh, work life. But I was. I had the risk of getting burned out and like, you know, with the emerging technologies or technologies focused, there's like, you know, like lots of things coming on and like you're always tempted to learn new things. So it's kind of like creating that balance is uh, like, you know, not easy. And uh, at some point I actually stopped doing works uh, for the last uh, year and a half. Well, obviously there's nothing going on with COVID, but even before that, because it's kind of like I want to spend more time with my family and like, you know, uh, spend a bit more time on myself or then like, you know, starting and kind of like a session of work after 9, 10 p.m. to like, you know, 2 a.m. But uh, I still want to do it if I could. Like, you know, it's just finding that balance and like, you know, I wasn't able to create that balance. Like, you know, some of my friends, for example, like from that uh, era, like they kind of like left their jobs and became full-time artists. That wasn't a kind of uh, option for me because uh, like of my visa status, so like, you know, and uh, in the end, I kind of uh, stopped doing that or like kind of, it's, it's something I still want to do, but it's just, I need to do it with a better balance, basically. So, um, and uh, my final picture is actually from 2013. I actually worked on this while I was in the Purdue campus. This is a, a concert hall in Minecraft. It was uh, created for an like, artist residency in like San Jose State University. And like, you know, I created a concert hall, created some instruments for people to play with. And it's kind of like another thing where like enabling people to create more going with that idea. So with that being said, uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for having me here and let me know if you have any questions and like them um, chat. So I'll kind of stop the screen share for now, but uh, so I can see you guys. But we can kind of like open it if you have any questions about the slides too. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, um, Yagis. This this was also a fantastic presentation and super relevant in the context of what we've been doing all semester long in this class, bringing up some of the questions you posed today and showing some of your responses and some of the works you have created. So so thank you very much for that. Um, yes, so we have time for questions, um, please. Um, just uh, let Yagis know if you have any questions. You can just shout them out or we can use the chat. Either one would be fine, um, but we, we have some time now for that. Um, Thank you so much. I, I really enjoyed your work. Yagis yeah, and, and and nice to meet you. I have a quick question, like um, technical question about the project that you have done, Eli, the one that you talk and that semi AI technology responded to you. I have a question, what is the logic uh, of the programming? I mean, um, do you like anticipated all the sounds or you do you have any kind of logic for the programming that uh, like, in, that AI responded randomly, or what was that? So the way I did was like, you know, it basically kind of recorded what, it analyzed what you said, and like grabbed like the, uh, the kind of the, uh, like audio qualities of that, like the, the pitch, like the volume, and like, you know, that used it as the main source for its responses. But I also added some kind of like, uh, what's that called? Uh, Short-term memory, so like, you know, like, it's a web page, so if you refresh, it forgets everything, but like, you know, it would kind of remember your response, kind of pull from, like, you know, like, what you said before. And when I say, when I say pull from, it's all about, like, you know, the sound levels, the frequency, like, the kind of, like, the, uh, some other sound characters of your voice. And also, put, I also put some, like, you know, randomization, so to kind of, like, add some, like, you know, a little bit flavor and unpredictable to the system, but it was, like, you know, 
because all have all fake. There was no real AI, like you know, from a, a technical standpoint. It's all about like you know the uh, like you know like it's kind of R two D to talking. You know, it's like when you hear R two D two, you can like put emotions in. That's kind of the same idea. And it was like one man show project, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a long commit at that time. I did most of that project during the uh, during like you know like a forty five minutes one way, forty five minutes back, like train ride actually. So that was kind of like one of my uh, secrets with that project. <laughs> Thanks. Is uh is that like a form of a GAN or is it a different method of uh, like auto generating something? Yeah, as I said, there was actually no like you know real AI or machine learning of any kind. It's actually like you know what you are saying is analyzed and stored in the memory, and like you know it's kind of like a series of like nodes, if you will, and then that was kind of like getting a little bit kind of like randomization touch ups, and then getting played back with the kind of internal instruments, and the internal instruments were all kind of created with like the web technologies. So it's, it's it's it was kind of like pretty linear per se, like you know the like the unpredictability was coming from some randomization, like some short term memory that it was remind, remembering. And also the in inaccuracies in the system, like, you know, like which was also intentional, like it wasn't like a perfect system and it didn't need to be and shouldn't be like, as I was saying, it's kind of like talking to a kind of like a, a toddler, talking to a, like, you know, cat, talking to a kind of like, you know, like your favorite plant, you know. Can you guys, can you hear um, me? Yes, Shane. Shane first and then Ning <laughs> afterwards. Yeah, sure. So I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit about your process, like with your education before you moved into uh, the ETB program and how that, how your just, your workflow goes when you're approaching working on these. So uh, my pet is like, you know, how can I say this? I was here and I want to be there and I didn't go like that. I kind of went like that, which was uh, like, you know, both good and bad. Like, you know, it's like you learn a lot. You learn some things that you don't need, but you also get much more perspective, but it's also not the kind of short. So this is like, you know, so, uh, and they all kind of like help you, like, you know, with understanding things like, you know, for example, like I have like, you know, like my undergrad is, like, I know like I knew how to design integrated circuits in the like, uh, like nanometers level, and I still remember some of that. But this is kind of like for me, it's more about like the conceptual ideas, for example, like that remain. And in my case, uh, it's like kind of like they they uh, they become part of your workflow, like things that you pick up along the way. Like uh, for example, like uh, one important thing is uh, like you know like how, for example, how they execute execute a project. Project like you know like you know for example what you're going to do. And then how you can kind of get from like you know like point A to point B, and then you look at like your resources, kind of like your uh, like you know like time, and like getting like like understanding what your capabilities are, and like you know kind of trying to uh, like you know be realistic about like where you can get this. For example, I would say like I learned a lot about that more from like the the, the technical part of my background, like that's a lot like focused, and like you know, when you're working with like events, like they have a deadline in general and like, you know, and like, I don't always have something going on. Sometimes like I see a kind of like, a, you know, uh, like a, what's it called? Uh, call for work. I'm like, oh, this, like this is something I was thinking about. So then I kind of make it kind of like, I know I, I have a concept, but I don't have anything that's say working. Then like, I need to kind of like plan ahead, like, you know, what I can actually propose and can actually do it. And like what I can actually do, like, that's part of the, the thing. In my case, like as I said, like, uh, like I had certain topics in my mind, but like you know, like those kind of more kind of uh, topic-focused stuff requires a uh, what's it called? Kind of like a like an event or like a conference that kind of makes sense, sense with it, for example. But uh, for like the more kind of like oh, just focusing on aesthetics, just focusing on kind of like uh, like technology, just focusing on UX, kind of kind of works. They are actually easier to kind of show because they can be kind of like easy, kind of like uh, look from this side and suddenly about blah blah, blah and like you know, uh, 
of kind of like uh, and showing was kind of giving me access to like you know more feedback, getting people, and also kind of like another like uh, I came kind of like a deadline was kind of like always a, a good motivator, like you know especially given like limited time, like you know it's like and um, does that answer your question? I'm kind of like going around your question a little bit, but. Oh, thank you. That's kind of why I asked is to get your personal perspective on how that flow works, because like everybody comes from a different place in that undergraduate work and where that focus was. And I was just curious how that worked for you as compared to someone like me who comes from the art background first and is learning those technical skills mm -hmm. after that. Yeah, learning is always like, I mean, to me, like learning is endless, like, you know, and uh, it's like, Kind of everybody learns in a different way and uh, kind of finding how you learn is important like you know my, uh, one of my personal like relations is that like you know like i didn't learn how to learn till i get to like you know maybe uh, like my third fourth year of undergrad like you know i was a great student like back then but i also wasn't challenged like you know i wasn't aware that i didn't know how to learn for example you know and uh, like Figuring it out, like, you know, is I think the best part, like, you know, whether it's like, you know, listening to a lecture, whether it's doing things where it's a combination of both is kind of like a uh, challenge. And it's not like, you know, sometimes what you think it is, like in my case, like, you know, I wasn't, ex like, you know, I come from a more traditional thing and I thought I was just a great learner by reading. And actually I'm not like, you know, I actually, uh, my learning is like, you know, I need to read, I need to listen, I need to do like the combination of all of them like one of them is not enough for me so like that's like one thing i can realize late yeah like you know after some struggles in undergrad the first couple of years but uh and uh it's, it's like when you're trying to learn i think one of the challenges is like you always like, like you want to get from point a to point b and point a is boring and point b is interesting and fun and you try to do everything at the same time and then most of the time, like, you know, and I say mm, you, but not specifically about people, like, you know, and then, like, you get kind of lost and discouraged because you are trying to do so much. Like, so it's kind of like always, the, like, um, like, biting more than you can chew is, is always a temptation. And, like, you know, especially, like, in learning, because you want to learn, you want to do better things, it's more interesting. So it's always kind of like a challenge to, like, you know, like, how much uh, you can, like, what's the next step, what's the next step? And uh, it is not fun, but struggling is less fun, you know? So uh, that's something like, you know, like especially uh, like, like, like trying, like we all had this experience, like, you know, we make a project proposal for a class and then like, you know, like, you know, we always have grand ideas, but the, it actually needs to be kind of like much smaller to actually done within the class. It actually needs to be much to be kind of done in a kind of like, understanding in a positive way it's a, it's a challenge and it actually never kind of goes away but you kind of start to grow like you know like like not silencing that part because you shouldn't silence that part like you should listen to that part accept it but then like break it down into more kind of like humanly uh possible like you know ways because like you don't want to kind of like uh, let go of like the grand vision per se but like it's not just like a single step going from nothing to grand vision also. Yeah, that's that's very nice. And I think super relevant to this class right now. I see, you know, Shane was smiling, uh, Will is smiling there. So I, I think many, many students connect to that right now. This idea of, you know, where do you want to go and how you can really reach that goal. And maybe you have to break things down into smaller steps first and just, you know, chisel away step by step until you actually get where you uh, eventually want to go with that. Uh, but Ning, I think you had a question. You wanted to say something just a minute ago. Ning, do you, did you want to say something? Yeah, sorry. My Wi-Fi has been cutting out, so I only got half of that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering like how your cultural background has impacted your artwork and how um, studying at Sweden also impacted it and why you specifically chose Sweden and then came to San Francisco. So my cultural background definitely impacts, uh, you know, it's this uh, like, 
there are things that impact snack more like conscious level, and there are lots of things that impact snack you know, subconscious level. Where like you know, some people get, oh, this is so good. I'm like, oh, this is like this is the common thing at at home. Like you know, I don't even like, for example, like you know, realize that it's also kind of like uh, it gives you definitely like more perspective. Like you know, just because like you know, having exposed to other stuff. Like you know, and it, I think it's always a good thing being exposed to more cultures, more backgrounds, and. Um, like, uh, but on the other side, like, you know, it's also like nowadays, everything is pretty global. Everybody has unique backgrounds. So it's kind of creates like, you know, it's not like there's a monoculture per se. And um, she looks frozen. So I, I want to stop so she can maybe catch up, but. Okay, I'll, I'll continue maybe uh, since she, she can watch the recording. So, um, on the other hand, uh, like Sweden to like, you know, what's that called? Sweden to uh, Indiana to San Francisco. That was a uh, like journey I didn't obviously like, you know, like charted, uh, like, you know, initially, but it's kind of like looking at what are the opportunities that I have and like, you know, uh, what I can kind of like, um, like do. And uh, for me, Sweden was uh, like, a different culture, like, you know, I had a couple of friends going there and like, you know, like I was, I, I liked what kind of the culture that, that kind of offered within the university with some of the professors and that was kind of what I, what I went there. And uh, like um, coming to ETB was like, you know, Fabian was the, one of the main reasons, like, you know, uh, like, you know, he, he's like, you know, talk, talk, talking to me for joining was kind of like, uh, like one of my kind of uh, things that changed my mind or that convinced me. And uh, going to San Francisco was also like, you know, as I said, I was looking for actually academic positions, like, you know, after graduation. And like, one thing I realized was uh, like, you know, academic jobs are hard to come by. And, uh, and, and I don't know what you'll say probably to this, but like, you know, it's kind of like, really hard to find a, like, I, I'm a city person. It's really hard to find a kind of like a, a, a opening, not a position, like opening in a, Good university at a uh, like you know interesting city. And it's always like a combination like you have to kind of like give up one place or the other. And in the end, like you know, um, like I didn't want I, I didn't want to kind of like stay in a, a kind of like a Midwest place where produce is recognized a lot. And like you know, for like the kind of the other cities like you know like uh, and like for example in San Francisco there is like you know you have Berkeley, Stanford, and then lots of not so great universities and like Berkeley and Stanford are like I'll be honest like they are kind of beyond my uh, kind of level or then they, they don't even like have openings and like you know and so that's why I looked into like you know um, like industry and that was also kind of like a not a kind of easy path for me because like I looked at like you know, some of the companies and they were like you know for example like, I looked at game companies and I wasn't really interested in like what they were doing like you know like they were like using one part of what I wanted to do but not like the rest and the agencies, when I discovered them, was kind of like, okay, like this is like a like an uh, interdisciplinary team. Like everybody has like you know a couple of backgrounds, like you know, and that was kind of like, they were like the result is yes, like you know, uh, proof of concepts or like you know uh, advertisement, but like you know they were still trying to combine like you know this uh, like the similar craft and like trying to create these interdisciplinary products or like interdisciplinary experiences, and that was kind of like what uh felt like okay this makes sense and like you know that's why i kind of joined there and um eventually it was like you know uh like i did lots of interesting things but like i never bought the idea of like making ads kind of like it always was kind of like a you know uh, kind of feeling hollow to, hollow to me a little bit so going to like you know facebook oculus is like more about like you know okay, how can i help like you know affect the core technology and like you know make uh like make it make VR better and kind of like scale it up like, rather than like creating something for a like, you know, event like CES, which is like, you know, super gate access. How can we kind of like uh, make the new technologies like, more accessible, more helpful to people, like, you know, maybe get a chance to like, you know, shape uh, a new medium, a new media. I have a question kind of along those lines. Uh, Given that work you've been doing there and developing that, the core of that new media, do you have any suggestions for hardware for anybody working with Unity right now 
in terms of those the uh, hardware capability differences between say the Rift S or the or the more accessibility of the Quest? I mean, I'm like, all the things I'm super biased like about this. Like I work at Facebook, like you know, I use uh, like uh, Quest to daily so like you know and I would kind of suggest quest to and the reason is uh, like you know and again I'm biased like I like you know I work there but uh, it's about accessibility basically like you know and it's uh, like it's about accessibility it's about uh, it also like you know expressibility like you know, for example Vibe has great controllers like you know I love them like, from like, what you can do but like, how many people have them like you know and uh, like I did like lots of bespoke kind of experiences. So I'm kind of more looking at like, you know, like, and obviously we are still like not mainstream at all, but like, when you think about it, that they were, what's the most mainstream, what's the most accessible thing. And that's why I would suggest that. And um, yeah, and like, you know, Switch has been uh, pretty helpful like with this quarantine, like, you know, and uh, like, you know, reaching out to friends and spending time in VR has been, like uh, pretty nice for me at this. All right. At this point, I think um, we're we're at a good point here to uh, to stop our discussion. Um, so thank you very much one more time, Yagis, uh, for your time. And then, if you don't mind, what we've also done in our previous uh, visiting artist visits in this class is, if if you wanted to stay on maybe for five or ten more minutes. Um, there's usually a smaller circle of students and we can just chat a little bit more informally. Sure. About yeah, yeah.